Cinnamon grew up in the Colorado sunshine on our alfalfa pastures till we flood irrigate with snow melt from the Colorado Rockies. She was an adorable calf. Had to spend her days in the beautiful pastures with her mother. Being her friend Snowflake there in the background. I brought this cow, Ginger, back to the farm in the back seat of my pickup truck when she was a week old and bottle fed her. She's getting on, I think about six years old now. Fabulous cow. Produces amazing clean milk. Doesn't have any mastitis issues. And because she was bottle fed, She's basically like a big golden retriever. The other one, however, is a different story. She's sired by our old friend Doug. Really nice A2, A2 New Zealand Jersey genetics, both Ginger and Doug. She was born right here on the farm, but she was corrupted by a belted Galloway bottle calf. Doesn't respect fences too well. Took off last spring and joined the neighbor's Black Angus herd and got herself knocked up. Basically, the sort of emo behavior you'd expect from a teenage girl named Cinnamon, I suppose, with that haircut. So at any rate, she is due to calf any old time now. She's skittish, doesn't really let me handle her. So very soon, we're going to have to have a little dance, darling. We like our cow's horns on around here. These horns are the only thing this mother cow will have to defend her calf once it's born from the mountain lions and bears and coyotes and stray dogs that can threaten a young calf. The horns also have a role in the hierarchy of the herd, and they store enzymes that the cow uses in digestion. So if you approach a cow who's laying down ruminating, chewing her cud, and feel the horns, they'll be hot. It was a good thing Cinnamon didn't calve early. We had a about a foot blizzard and temperatures down around six degrees here for a little while. So it was good that she waited. We were a little concerned about this delivery because the Black Angus sire is a larger body frame than these Jersey dairy cows. And so we knew the calf would be fairly large. And this being the first time calving for cinnamon, and being a month younger than I would have liked her have been. We were keeping a close eye on her. At this point, I was getting a little worried because she had been at it for about an hour and was kind of stalling out with these two hooves out, but she progressed, and here she is just about to get past the years. We can breathe a sigh of relief at this point. These jerseys are bred to be excellent mothers. Good to see the calf moving. And one more 
question shall be fully born. There we go. So now Mama Cow should get up at this point and start cleaning up that baby. Here's Grandma coming over to inspect. I've got a baby. Up she goes. She'll start cleaning it up, eat the rest of that amniotic sac, and get the calf dried off. So what I'm watching for at this point is that the calf can get up within an hour or two and get onto the teat and get that colostrum that's going to start off the biome in the calf's rumen and confer immunity and, and other things that that first couple of days of colostrum is going to provide. And up she is, getting dried off. Grandmother's going to come over and say hello. And in about a half an hour or so, she found that teat, and we knew everything would be all right. And so begins the slow rodeo of trying to capture this young mother and get her milk trained. This open country, rough terrain, makes it an extra challenge. And of course, while I'm trying to get her, the calf sneaks through the electric fence and I had to go drag her out of the cattails. And of course, the other cow has got to come over and check out the gear. But eventually, I was able to get a hold of her and get her tied off to this little tree. I, I chose a small tree so that the flex would keep her from straining herself while she's fighting that halter, still trying to get halter trained. And of course, her mom was messing with her there. So as she works against this tree, she realizes that if she steps forward, it takes the pressure off of her jaw, which makes her more comfortable. All of this is just drama. So we'll get her cleaned up. I'm just using some wet wipes here. I tend to use a more approach than a germ theory approach when it comes to managing these dairy cows and their udders. Just enough wet towelette to get those teats clean and particularly when I have a calf on I don't use a teat dip. I don't dip these teats in iodine when I'm done milking the saliva from the calf. We'll keep the biome robust enough to prevent infection. Of course, Ginger still wants to be involved. So here I'm using Milkmaid's Magical Utter Butter, crafted by our dear sister Megan up at Cedar Springs Farm. Using a bomb like this soothes the teats as you're milking them and helps prevent cracking and things like that. One can infuse rosemary and oregano to add a little antibacterial property to that as well, or just straight lard works. So here I'm applying the bag bomb to her teats. I'm not using the stool, I'm just trying to stay nimble and anticipate her movement. And there's some colostrum. So this cow has gone officially from birth to first milking. The calf is doing a good job of consuming all this colostrum, so there's not a lot in there. But just the process of milking her and getting her used to it, you can see that she's still got tension on her uh, halter there. So she's not relaxed at all. She's tolerating this, but just barely. But all 
these are the steps that she has to go through to become a good milk cow. More drama, more harassment from her mother. She slipped her halter, but isn't getting free. This took about 15 minutes or so of moving back and forth and ended up yielding a net half cup of colostrum, which the dogs enjoyed tremendously. So I fix her halter here and disconnect her, and then it's important for me to touch her and get her comfortable with being in contact with me. And she's untethered now and standing for this, which is progress. And of course, she's got to go check out the bucket, and off she goes. Day one of milking complete. I left her alone for a day and then started the radio again the day after that. Got her on a stouter tree now. It's not in the middle of a primrose bramble. She's still cantankerous. Not enthusiastic about the program here, but Having the calf close by always helps. So once again, I'll get her cleaned up. It was good to start training her down here in this open situation without a stanchion or shoots or anything like that, just to develop our relationship a little bit. She's actually being a little affectionate, which is good. Still got a lot of tension on that tether. The one nice thing about her is that she is not kicky, which is a huge advantage. Just being tied off like this too allows her to move and feel like she has a little more agency and she won't panic, she'll just make a bit of a fuss. And having the calf close is going to allow me to come around the back side of her, a little hay in my pail of course. And when she looks over her shoulder and sees the calf, instead of me, she calms down a bit. I'm expelling the plugs from each teat. Still holding the bucket with one hand and milking one teat at a time with the other because I know that she's going to move around. Just letting her move when she wants to move and working both sides so that she's comfortable being milked from either side. Staying on my toes and letting her do what she needs to do. So after another 20 minutes of dancing around like that, we Got her milked off for the first time in her milk. And I think I ended up with right around a quarter so. Which is just fine. This is more about developing this relationship and getting her trained than it is any sort of production. I'm letting the calf have almost everything. I was thinking about going in again, but decided, ah, she's done. There's that quart of milk. So Clover gets to hang out between this 
one ton of horns and hamburger to keep her safe and we got her grandma and her mom and Cap is doing great beautiful color nice strong baby I'm hanging out down by the creek here fresh water good alfalfa hay can't beat it so here we go third milking I left her for a day between Calf is on the back side there. Once again, a little bit of foreplay here. And with the calf on one side and me on the other, I'm actually able to set the bucket on the ground for the first time. He's standing pretty good. Almost a little slack in that lead. But this creek that's behind us here always rises with the runoff in early April. And this is mid-March, so it's about time to get these cows moved back up to the upper pasture. You can see that she's not nearly as fidgety, not throwing herself around and being dramatic. Just wait for her to settle and off comes the lead. She actually chose to move closer to me there, which was big progress. There's our quart of milk. that day and then the one from two days before shows that nice cream line moving day is at hand I built a stanchion in the main corral and off we go up the hill on top of this mesa where our three acre alfalfa pasture is Hard side corral. Girls are settling in. Pa's flirting with the calf. And there is Cinnamon test fitting the milking stanchion. Here's the procedure in the sub corral. I put some hay in there for Ginger. And then sequester her off in there because Cinnamon likes to use her as a pick when I'm trying to chase her. And better to not be harassed by Grandma while we're trying to milk. Then I load hay into the feeder of the stanchion. And with a little luck, I won't have to grab her halter and go for a ride and can just convince her that going into that stanchion to eat hay is a good thing to do. So I move in small movements, just trying to put a little pressure to get her to turn the way I want to without getting her riled up. Never want to run trying to move these cows they'll just outrun you and you'll get worn out. Calf went in. Mama's thinking about it. And we're in. So now I can get the halter, attach a lead to it, and get her head through that head gate. Eight inch gap between these two boards when the gates close. I've just got a little eye hook. So now she's locked in. Man, we'll get her 
cleaned up. Clover is helping me out here. Cleaning that passenger side front. This driver side front is not viable. That teat is deformed and so it's unproductive. So it'll just atrophy and she'll make up the production in the other three quarters. Won't interfere with her production much, I don't imagine. Having Clover down here helping me causes cinnamon to let her cream down and makes the milking go better. So she's standing like a champ. And away we go. Nice milk mustache on the baby girl there. She milks really easy. You don't have to apply a whole lot of pressure on those teats, which is a great attribute in a milk cow. And so from this point, this will be a, a daily routine. I'm not separating off the calf. Just taking whatever's left over. And once Clover starts eating hay, I can separate her at night and probably get a gallon and a half or so. Be sure to subscribe if you want to see what I do with all of this milk over the milking season.